Welcome back to Martyrs of Faith. Today our topic is the Muslim heritage in the world. And we're here in London to speak to Professor Al Hassani. And I was particularly interested, before the break, you told me about a very famous lady who started the first university in the Muslim world. In fact, the first university in the whole world. Uh, was this a one-off or were there more women involved in science and knowledge in the Islamic history? Yeah, um, uh, thanks very much for, uh, uh, for this opportunity. There are um, uh, not many uh, manuscripts that have been edited to show uh, the role of many even male scientists. <laughs> the, rob the problem is this, when you ask uh, scholars like Professor Qasim Samurai in Leiden University, who is a pale paleographist, who uh, they, they study manuscripts, he says that there are at least five million manuscripts in the world. And, and when I asked him how many of them are edited, he said there are only about 50,000 edited. Wow. wow. You know, so there's an enormous amount of knowledge which has not been explored. And then if you go by this 50,000, most of this 50,000 is about theological arguments and, you know, about Muslim uh, schools of thought. They're about political dynasties and uh, about literature and so on. There's very few about science and so on. And, and that's the little bit that we discover and we find out, oh, wow, you know, it's enormous. Mm. However, when you talk about women, it's even scarcer within this first 50,000. But recently, uh, the Oxford Center of Islamic Studies had a, a, uh, a research fellow who have identified, this is Dr. Nadoui, identified 8,000 women scholars in the early years of Islam who were experts and teaching in the Quran and Sunnah and so on. Now to me, I thought, wow, if we have so many of them in the inner sanctum of theology, which at the moment the West is still cannot resolve, you know, uh, the women in, you know, in, in, in priesthood or, or the Jewish religion. So if the Muslims had 8,000 in the first few years of Islam, you know, then, it, then it obviously it would be a lot, it is even more obvious that they must have dabbled with science and mathematics and so on because I can't see there any difficulty there. Now this brings me to the point that those few manuscripts tell us that yes, there are. <coughs> Give you an example. There was a great lady mathematician in Baghdad. Her name is Suteta. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this uh, Suteta was expert witness in courts. So the judge would use her to calculate. You know, you have a problem between two people, a contractor who has uh, uh, not finished a building mm -hmm. and wants to resolve this contract and so on. How do they do that? She would do mathematical analysis wow. using various techniques like algebra and geometry and so on, to calculate how much has been done from the building in terms of area and volume and material uh, out of the whole total project which has been originally bidded. When and then she would, she would give this in Baghdad. When was it? This was about 900 years ago. Wow. So, you know, and this is Sutaita al-Ma'amli. Then another one, uh, just, just for a, a, a typical example, mm. a much younger one who was in Aleppo, in Halab, in Syria. She, uh, her name was uh, Maryam Al-Ajli, from the family of, of Al-Ajli. Uh, she used to make astrolabes. Mm. Now, astrolabe is the most complicated piece of uh, machine in her time. Mm -hmm. This is the equivalent of the GPS system that we have today. Okay. That machine would have various disks, which you dial when you put a pointer to a particular star in the sky, it will tell you where you are, gives you all sorts of information about sunrise, sunset, oh. the direction where you have to go, and the and, and so. And these disks, they are sort of like a like a computer program, except they are mechanical, very much like the CD-ROMs that we have today. You put in this program, the program there is engraved on the disk, and that program is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the trajectories of the movements of the stars on that particular area that's been squashed flat instead of a spherical, hemispherical dome of the sky of that city is squashed and then the movement of, so the tracing of the movement of these stars is a very complicated business. Yeah. And so though she <coughs> used to make those and, and so I would 
make her to you know be a lady and mathematic mathematicians uh, engineering and metallurgists and so on astronomer as well uh, there, there are quite a lot of ladies actually in fact even uh, there are so many ladies of medicine ladies of uh, management and and, 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 and and so on now just to sum up uh, where are you going to take uh, the project in the future what's your idea well, we, have, we are very keen to produce uh, educational resources and, and uh, we have uh, uh, enormous ambitions in creating uh, virtual spaces in the internet okay. so that st the schools and teachers uh, can go and visit uh, and talk even to those past great characters. Wow. Uh, and uh, uh, so we believe in a method we call edutainment and, and you educate through entertainment. Brilliant. Uh, we are also uh, commissioning uh, professors to continue to investigate and write because we have a production line you have original research material that has to be academically peer-reviewed properly investigated so you don't end up conveying wrong message to the rest of the world and then through a production line you produce something for the media for the schools for the public and, and so and on exhibitions are part of yes. this now movement? we have a touring exhibition of course mm -hmm. called 1001 inventions exhibition it's been touring in the UK it's been into the major cities it'll be in London um, uh, Science Museum uh, but this one will be in a uh, it's a global form we have now uh, increased its volume and higher quality than before it'll and come to it, the States it will be well? launched from uh, London after three months it will go hopefully to Washington DC and it will tour the UK yeah. uh, sorry it will tour the US there are other versions hopefully which will go to Europe uh -huh. and the Middle East as well wish us luck and well I wish us. you God's blessings yeah. may this project go far Thank and you. wide Thank and you. really it sounds uh, very very inspiring for everybody the West the East ladies <laughs> gentlemen uh, this really is an inspiring project and I really hope um, uh, we will all be able to sample a little bit of it so it's the Muslim heritage in all the world 1001 inventions we can um, discover it online in exhibitions and in this wonderful book form well thank you very much professor Hassani to join us here on matters of faith thank you for watching and we'll see you soon again with another inspiring program bye bye